The bosses in Breath of the Wild were sort of unique to the series. The combat in general allowed you to see the health of different enemies and minibosses, and this is the case with the bosses as well. Sadly, with the standard items that are usually found in the series gone, so were the creative and sometimes puzzling ways to fight the bosses that made them all stand out from each other. It's not like they were all straightforward and all the same, but like the Divine Beasts, they did not feel that much different from each other, even if they had different elements that they used in the battles. For this list, we are not looking at the Overworld's minibosses. In fact, we're not making a list about them at all. Here, we're focusing on all the Ganon battles, meaning all the Blight Ganon battles inside the Divine Beasts, and the final battle itself, where we split the two phases into two different entries like we normally do for these rankings within each game. So this wasn't really easy for us to make, because when all the different dungeon bosses were some form of Blight Ganon, it made them very bland to us. Sort of how we felt about the Divine Beasts as well. We've only faced these bosses a few times and haven't really explored everything there is, so please don't take this as fact or anything, as our experiences with these have been a bit limited. In addition, it's entirely up to you how powerful you want to be before you face these bosses. You can do it at pretty much any time you want, which means that the difficulty of the challenge is based on how far you have reached into the game. Also, like the rest of the lists, we made this one before any DLC was made, so we just want to remind you that we don't take any DLC into consideration here, should there be a time when new bosses have been introduced through that. So let's just do this. We're the owners of Triforce, I'm owner 2, and I'm owner 1, and here is our Breath of the Wild boss ranking. The final boss should always be spectacular, and while some dungeon bosses in the series sometimes overshadow the final one, we really expected more out of the second phase of the final battle here. The battle against Dark Beast Ganon felt huge and pretty epic. It really did. But when it comes down to the actual battle, then we notice that there's practically no challenge at all. This beast is freaking huge and looks so threatening and intimidating. I mean, this is Ganon right in front of us, and he's never been bigger. Yet, all you do is easily avoid that huge beam and his feet as he occasionally moves around. There's not really much trouble in getting away from this battle untouched, and even if you do get hit, you won't really lose a lot of health. This battle actually reminds us of Majora's incarnation from Majora's Mask. Although a whole lot weirder, it did feel atmospheric, but when it came to the actual fighting, it posed almost no threats. But look at the size of this beast! You think it would destroy us easily, but nope! It might be something we don't understand about it, like, if we had to guess, maybe Ganon was weaker now than earlier. But still, when this is how you end the game, with, admittedly, great atmosphere and such, but without much gameplay, we end up disappointed. Among the Blight Ganon battles, the first one we see on this list is Wind Blight Ganon. He's fairly big and carries an arm cannon that can blast a few shots of blue energy. He will also teleport around and summon tornadoes to hurt you. The surroundings of this fight are pretty good. It's on top of the Divine Beast, out in the open air. With the pillars standing around, it feels like we're fighting among ruins of some structure. What's also kinda cool here is that even though he stays up in the air a lot, seemingly being unreachable, there are these fans in the ground that blow air upwards, allowing you to use your glider to come closer to it. In the second phase, he will start summoning four small... things? That helps empowering his shots from the arm cannon. They will also make formations and shoot laser beams at you. It's not an entirely difficult boss fight, at least according to Owner 2. But as you see, I didn't perform all that well, but it doesn't take a whole lot of damage until it's finished. It's a decent boss. Coming in at number 4 is Water Blight Ganon. Unlike the outside area where you fought Wind Blight Ganon, this battle takes place inside a room within the beast in shallow water. What's funny is that I never really realized until seeing the footage that there's no door locking us in there. I never tried, but is it possible to exit the room during the battle? No idea, but what we do know is that Water Blight Ganon carries a pretty huge spear that can reach you from a long distance. It's pretty cool how easily he destroys your Cryonis pillars with it, 
but it's also pretty easy to avoid it, especially if you're standing close to his body. He will mostly just teleport around and swing his spear during the first phase. While in the second phase, he raises the water level and four pillars to act as platforms above the surface. Now he'll start hanging from the ceiling and creating ice cubes to send towards you, in addition to using the spear, which he can also throw. The cubes can easily be blocked by the cryonis pillars or even arrows, or you can lead them to the pillars and destroy themselves. It's absolutely not a bad fight, but it's somewhat easier for us than the two others, and we do like to get challenged as well. Rocking a hairstyle like a young Choji from Naruto is Fireblight Ganon, which lands our number 3 spot. The battle takes place on top of Varudania, in the open hot air with lava surrounding the area inside a volcano. The stage is awesome here, and the Blight actually does look pretty cool with its giant axe. Alright Daruk, you're the man. It starts off with a sword being its primary weapon, in addition to summoning some fireballs to throw at you. You can always stun the Blights with an arrow at the right time, but what's really annoying at times with this one is how it stays in the air when stunned, which makes it harder to reach him with a melee weapon. The second phase of the battle takes on a very familiar form to the series, in which he shields himself within a fire sphere, and starts sucking energy to conjure up a fireball that'll explode as soon as it hits something. He seems invincible? but you have to start thinking of the older games in the series. Cause this is very reminiscent of the Dodongo battles. Just like when Dodongo inhales air to its stirrups of fire, you have to throw a bomb towards Fireblight Ganon to stun him. We enjoyed this, cause even if it seemed obvious to many when this is a Zelda game, it was actually easy to not think of this when we're so used to different gameplay elements in this title compared to older ones. We like this mixture of old and new ways of thinking, and when you consider the amazing surroundings and other ways to attack, this boss becomes pretty fun to us. He may be the smallest, but also the most challenging. Of course, in my case, that's mostly because he was the first boss I faced, with only 6 hearts and little experience with the game. However, we also keep hearing that others found Thunderblight Ganon to be the most challenging among the Blight fights. Carrying a sword and a shield, this boss is lightning fast and can strike you easily if you're not on edge. What you gotta do is to attack its shield enough for it to break, and he'll be open for attacks. That can be done by either avoiding his strike, or by blocking it first. And of course, he has to throw some elemental spells towards you as well. The second phase is a bit more interesting, as he charges his weapon with lightning and starts summoning rods that plants to the ground around you, and charges them with lightning as well. This is when you need to use his element against him, and at least one way of doing that is to use Magnesis to carry one of those rods close to him so that the lightning strikes and stuns him. So the battle itself is very fun and intense, but atmospherically, it's not that amazing. It takes place inside the main room of the beast, and it is pretty cool that you can use the platforms around, but it doesn't give the battle a big enhancement in just how it feels, like how the lava helped in the battle against Fireblight Ganon. Still, it was a fun battle for us, and even if you do disagree on it being difficult, again, it's all depending a lot on how strong we've gotten before the encounters. We thought he brought a good challenge. Of course, that leaves Calamity Ganon, the first phase of the entire final boss. This is also a special case of a boss. Let's start with his appearance. This has to be the most unexpected form of Ganon we've ever seen in the series. We never imagined that we would see a sort of arachnid form of Ganon that sometimes climbs the walls and where he carries every weapon that the Blight Ganons had, in addition to having a couple of guardian legs. He uses the arm cannon, the spear, the swords, and the different elements to take Link down. It's weird, but also unique. Yeah, we'll take it. This is definitely the most challenging boss battle in the game in our experience. He has a lot of health and many of your weapons definitely will break on him. It's convenient how there are weapons all around near the wall though. It's effective to stun him with various attacks, like Daruk's shield reflecting his weapon back at him, maybe an arrow in the right place at the right time helps, 
and knocking the beam from the arm cannon with your shield sure helps too. The second phase is a lot tougher, as he gets this awesome flame armor around him, and this is when I personally thought the battle became more interesting. It's still useful to stun him, but it's tougher to do that than before, cause arrows didn't seem to work. I used the flurry rush for the most part, as that seemed to stun him while, for some reason, his armor was down. I mostly relied on Urbosa's fury to stun him in this phase, which was effective for as long as I actually had charges left. It's also possible to use the shield to reflect the beam from his cannon, but honestly, I never even thought of that until I saw Aaron do that in Game Grumps. I never really used that to beat the Guardians either. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. It's a pretty cool thing how if you fight off the blights inside the Divine Beasts before this, they help you out by shooting some lasers into the castle and taking away half of Calamity Ganon's health. However, that also disappointed me a bit, cause that made the battle shorter. I mean, were we missing something from this battle if we did that? We had to check that out, and apparently, no. All that happens is that you actually have to fight the Blight Ganons no matter what. Because if you don't fight them in the Beasts, you fight them in a gauntlet before facing Calamity Ganon. The only change in that battle is that it's longer because he has more health. The battle stays exactly the same, as the faces change as soon as he reaches half of his health, which is of course a bit disappointing when we thought we missed out, but maybe a good thing if you only ever went to do the Beasts before facing him. Still, though, the battle is really good. It's a nice blend with the Blight battles, it's a completely new and unique look for a form of Ganon which is somewhat cool and weird at the same time. He was really challenging, especially when it comes to figuring out how to beat him with his armor on, and the music is really good as well. In the end, we found Calamity Ganon to be the best boss battle in the game from our experience. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.